If you stand there competently with the process and do not fall for their tricks, they actually have no leg to stand on and they know it. So it was a long-winded answer, but it's, a, it's an issue that really gets my goat, the whole issue of custody. Yeah, the, <clears throat> many of your updates will help cover that with rhetoric and arguments and so on. Yep, uh, absolutely. Uh, so as, the, as we uh, go into the courts, there's another uh, question regarding the court action. Uh, would, you, would you look to enforce one's court actions through the equity court invoking chancery court jurisdiction, which is the only realm that can see the real man? Or where do you suggest uh, enforcing one's court standing? Well, as, as, as you know, and by the way, I saw a comment there about the um, about uh, uh, property. I mean, the fact is that if you if you evoke the right that you are the true guardian of your children, and that they are um, they are in fact regarded as property, their own system regards it as property. Any comment from a judge that makes those throwaway comments is deliberate malfeasance of the judge and that should be obvious to anyone that that is deliberate malfeasance of the judges of course the children are res and property I mean they take into custody custody the word custody by definition means a custodian of property so it's self-evident in their system self-evident what they mean um, the so back yeah. to your question Terry about the one true court and in particular, being able to evoke the claims that are listed within the US Constitution, probably more than any, any other document. The problem is, <clears throat> is that the US is still under a state of martial law. So the courts will not recognize that. If I have heard of people perfecting the argument but I would suggest that in the current environment, anything associated with sovereign, someone saying sovereign's their sovereign or using the handle sovereign, anyone that is claiming uh, free or free man, if you look at the material that we've got out of the training of courts, judges, clerks, they've created now the image that anyone that claims to be sovereign or free or free man in their system is considered a paper terrorist. And that's what they've been trained. The FBI have been trained, the marshals have been trained, the courts have been trained. So you're dealing with a trigger that instinctively will cause a court to ignore any logical or rational argument. The minute you say that, you will get a visceral instinctive reaction. So I, I fear that the one true court, the living man, whilst it has absolute validity, it, it is rendered inert in a climate where the courts now are manned by arrogantly blind and stupid people and that have now been specifically trained to treat anyone that uses those things as a terrorist. And that's what's happened now. Or at least someone for psychoval. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's see. There's a question about. Uh, I received over in a different chat here. There's, there's a question about the uh, claim of right document. Didn't we? Uh, you, you had a document that came out a while back. Could you explain that document? That uh, is the claim of right document. Uh, which document? Can you have a document that, or do you have a document that expresses claim of right? Um, well, yeah, I mean, the, the claim of right process is the ecclesiastical deed process. That's our primary right. claim of right. Right, right. Well, we um, had one that was on land. Uh, that you, well, that's, yeah, I mean, that's slightly different. That's that's yeah. there on, on how to save your home, and that's the... Over on the, yeah. 
yeah, the, the claiming that your, your land is, is uh, sacred, which it is, yeah. uh, but it is yeah. perfecting that process. And I know there's gaps in those notes, and I know it's frustrating because there's still sections to be completed, but like with the Ritz, it, it's, it's, it's not simply coming up with a piece of paper and saying, da -da, there you go. It's having something behind it, and it's having the tools on how to yeah. deal with it. And so I'm... I, I have backed off from more work in completing some of those areas in order to focus on the foundation. And I know that that's a very frustrating thing because a large number of people come here because they've got an issue. They've got a problem they want to fix. And what they're looking for is the perfected pieces of paper. I have to get the, the foundation finished before we go back to finishing the paperwork because the two are intimately linked. Yeah. Very good. Now, on the um, uh, prayer of atonement, this is the next question from another question from earlier on the chat. Regarding the prayer of atonement applied in court, what exactly are we confessing to is the question. No, that's a good, great question. I mean, the, the prayer of atonement is a confession well, okay if you have been charged with a crime I hope no one would say that they are perfect that they have not lied that they have not sped that they have not cursed that they have not drunk that they have not done something that if they measure themselves against morals or commandments or, or, or a higher ideal will not be shown that they, have, they could have done better. I hope even the questioner would, would concede that, that there is at least something. So the prayer of the atonement really applies to that level. Now, it could have been that you stole a parking space I know that might sound like a trivial thing, but, but really the, the substance of the prayer of atonement is to collect any of those things. Now, <clears throat> when you go to court, uh, the atonement is confessing that, uh, that you have uh, been in error, but it's not saying that you have been in error to the matter at hand. It doesn't say that. It says you've been in error. The, the subject is up to you to decide. I did not deliberately did not suggest that the subject of the confession, um, the, whatever it is you're confessing to, uh, is nominated because I don't know what's in your heart. So would it be a parking fine or something more serious? It's up to you to insert what that is, but not to explicitly state it in the court because the court would then say it, it, you're talking about something that's irrelevant. What you're doing, however in perfecting the prayer of atonement is that you are creating and completing an indulgence. Now, when you complete and create an indulgence and do it in that manner, you're also enjoining. That means you're binding the current matter to your prayer because only you can confess. You've been invited there to participate in the process of perfecting an indulgence, perfecting a writ, perfecting a trust, perfecting bonds so they can make their money and everyone can move on. And the benefit is you get the absolution and the sentence and whatever it is. So that is the reason you do it. Now, whilst I gave that as a tool, I would suggest that it is not a tool that should be used as a first course, that there is a much less controversial way to behave with courts I gave it to show strength and to show that uh, when these things are used and a court ignores them, they ignore the very foundations of their being. It may, then people say, well, they don't care. Well, there are repercussions when they don't follow and it's repercussions at the appeal and at the appeal appeal that they did not follow. And it is very serious because it is, in fact, the whole reason for that court 
when you confess it and the matter's over and they still proceed, then they have breached the very bedrock of their existence. Now, what I'm frustrated about is uh, there is no one-size-fits-all and by introducing this, I'm concerned that people switch from going, I am trust recipient such and such, holder of my own title, which is just another way of saying I'm the trustee, Franco Collins, here, to, here by special um, appearance to address the matter where people go straight into a prayer because it's a monologue and then you know hope like hell that it all sorts out. I, I am concerned, which is why I spoke at length tonight about the tools that are being introduced, that people are still going to court under-equipped. Under but the confession for atonement is entirely up to you, but I've explained the purpose. It is an indulgence and it is a way to enjoin the current matter and complete it in accordance with the foundations of their own system. All right? Okay, yes. So it's uh, the next part of that question would be, do uh, you mean appearance or attendance? Uh, you attend, you don't appear. If I said special appearance, I mistaken, you uh, uh, attend, you don't appear. The, the, the words get confused and I get confused, but the difference is a slave appears, uh, but a... Um, but a person or a uh, person of standing attends. So you're, you're invited to attend a wedding. You're not summoned to appear. Yeah, you summons to appear a servant. You're invited to attend a wedding. That's the best way of dis distinguishing the difference. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Uh, all right. On the land process. When you go through the land process and the, and, uh, the right of claim and uh, removing the land, uh, is that actually removing it from the USA? And would, uh, the question was, would someone coming to visit you have to come with a visa, or is it that technical? Great question. Um, and because we're dealing with a system that's managed by pedants, um, they may even ask these questions. So it's worth investigating what these questions are. Uh, that you might say to, to friends when they visit that they, you give them a little book or something so they get a stamp and that might be part of the validation that the, the land is sacred and separate. Um, I don't have an answer for that, but it's, it's worth considering. Look, at the end of the day, the way to view yourself is that you... Uh, living in the midst of an alien nation, alien nation, which can also be strung together as alienation. They are not occupiers because we occupy. In their system, the, the Jesuit structure created provinces around the world. Why? Because they created a spiritual army, claimed them to be the soldiers of Christ, and then claimed that the world was conquered was occupied by a spiritual force and then over time the temporal force came into play. We've done the same. Heaven and hell is united. The earth is conquered. The spiritual forces occupy. These different groups are either alien nations or they are terrorist regimes. But you are unfortunately living in the shadow of an alien nation. And the proof that it's an alien nation is its behaviour to the earth. They are alien to the earth, they are alien to the environment, they are alien to virtues, they are alien to cooperation, they are alien to truth, and they are alien to the divine. They've proven exactly who and what they are. Yes, yeah. so... Um is that something then you're saying would need to be looked into as far as the process and how in depth that needs that would need to go? Well, this is yeah a process that happens after you've perfected your uh, consecration of your own land and notification. Yes. 